Well, hi there, I'm Sandy Allnock, artist and paper crafter here on YouTube with exciting news, colored pencil hex charts and a colored pencil jumpstart class prep, which means you can sign up for pre-registration right now. More on that in a few minutes. My project for today is making tags for my cases. I have 120 case that I've now moved my new polychromos into, since there's 120 of those. Tip for these, if you're using a bunch of colors and you're trying to figure out how to save out which one, which green did you use, just turn it upside down rather than leave everything out all over your table. It's kind of easier to keep them in the case at least. This is my case that I use for my luminance pencils. They're more expensive, but they're pretty nice. And the, uh, the little straps hold two pencils each and then there's room for extras. So if you kind of get mixed sets, you can get one of these 120 cases and it holds a lot. These are my, believe it or not, Crayolas. I'm going to use them for one thing in the class, <laughs> and that's a small case. And I used to have these Prismacolors in one of the 120s plus that little case, and now I found 150 case. It's huge. It's like way bigger, but at least they're all in one place now. And that's important to me to have them all in one place. And then I'm also going to make tags for my baby oil and my Gamsol. And I've put them into little containers that I got on Amazon with just a cotton ball in them so that they won't kind of knock over. And the cotton ball allows me more control over how much of the liquid that I pick up. So these are my two lids for the solvents. I'm going to color those and stick them on there. And then these are tags that I'm making for my cases. There's a whole bunch of blanks and then there's ones that have logos on them. If you want to download this and add a different logo in Word, and print it out for yourself. You can do one for your Copic markers, you can do them for whatever things you wanna make a label for. Or you can, instead of using these, you can just use dies if you want, but here's a download for you in case you want that. But what I'm gonna do is stamp some new purple onion images into it. Because they've got a new release out, which is always really fun. And I've got it set up in my Misty. You can trim this out so it fits in the Misty. And I'm using acetate so I can line them up, figure out where I want them. And then I'm gonna use sticky notes to block off the outside area so I can just stamp the image into that little center hexagon and then I'll be able to color it all. And then I'm going to uh, stamp a second one here. This one has flowers on it, it's a huge one, big wreath, and I'm gonna stamp it in two parts. So I'm gonna stamp a row of flowers on the top and then a row of flowers on the bottom and using that acetate again to get it all lined up nicely because these stamps, they come as plain red rubber so you do have to get something to put on the back of them. And I'll have a link at the end of this video to my video that shows you how to use stamps like this if you've never used red rubber stamps before. So here I'm gonna use my masking uh, again and I'm gonna just mask out one petal because there's one petal that's gonna crisscross and then I have a whole panel full of flowers. For coloring each one, I'm of course coloring the Prismacolor label in the Prismacolor pencils. And I'm gonna try to match the fronts and backs so I remember which one I did for which one. So I'm gonna use the same kind of colors around the edges for each one of these. And you can kind of do all kinds of fun, crazy things with these if you want. And again, you can use dies to make tags for yours. You can use all different kinds of fun things, or you can use these downloads, whatever you want. I just figured since I was doing it, I'd make it available to you. The uh, class that's coming, well, okay, it's now live sort of-ish. If you're watching this in the first week or two after this video posts, then you'll be able to go and pre-register basically for class. So you can go to the pre-class lesson, which is also free. So you can just go there. You don't have to buy the class yet. And you can see all of the supply videos, see what's needed for class. There's a couple stamps from Purple Onion that I highly recommend. And then other ones that are gonna be in the class, but you don't have to have them. I'm gonna do a couple things with a few of them because I know by the time you pay for a class and then the supplies and all the stamps, it can get really expensive. So I tried to limit the stamps that I'm actually using that I'd like you to color along with. You can also just draw your own images if you'd rather do that. This is not a, you have to, <laughs> you have to do it exactly what I'm doing. If you have images that are similar to the ones that are listed in class, then by all means, go ahead and use those for the same kinds of techniques that I'll be teaching in the class. So it is a color pencil jumpstart class. It's gonna be related to the Copic jumpstart class. I'm going to teach a whole bunch of different techniques for application of color, 
for blending. There's going to be some color theory in there, just like there was in Copic Jumpstart. But with Color Pencil Jumpstart, there's going to be more in terms of, I guess, um, technique type stuff rather than like, here's how you color a dog. So we're going to color a dog, but I'm going to teach you how techniques to do a bunch of different kinds of things. And some of it's going to include solvents like this. So you'll want to get one solvent or another. You don't have to get all of the ones that are listed, but I've given you options in the pre-class lesson so you can kind of decide what you want to get. And you don't have to have all of the blending tools, but I'm going to demonstrate them all so you can see them. And you can also decide later if you want to get them later rather than get them ahead. But I do recommend that you have at least a solvent and a blending stump or two so that you can use those right away in class. And I've discovered a love for the Luminance blending pencil, which is the coolest thing. It's really, really cool. So there's that. And there's a couple other things in there that I recommend in the pre-class lesson, one of which is some new paper that I saw recommended and I was so excited. It's called Stonehenge. And I'm going to do a bunch of the lessons on that. So I do recommend that you purchase that pad. It's a little hard to find, so you might want to make sure you order it sooner rather than later. Hello, doggies. I know there's a car driving by, so they get very excited when a car drives by. <laughs> anyway, got this little sleeping mouse that I'm coloring right now and doing some blending on the background. And with the blending stumps, if you have two or three that have two ends on them, you're probably good to go. You don't have to have a separate one for each color. These are now colored and I've put some masking tape over them, some, some packing tape just to protect them so that I don't, you know, get fingerprints all over them. I ended up having to actually <laughs> trim them out by hand because my punch didn't fit. But if you have a punch or die that fits, you can do that or you can make your own any old way you want. Now here I've trimmed out each of the hexagons. They're really easy to trim out by hand. They're just straight lines. And if you screw one up, which I did, then I have a solution for you. So all of them worked really nicely. You can see they all came out great, except this one on the right. The border went away because when I stuck them to each other with the double stick tape on the back, um, I stuck them on crooked and then I just had to keep trimming until I cut off the parts that were weird. <laughs> so here are my finished tags and my finished little bottles of solvent all ready to roll and they have two sides to them. And hopefully this is going to help me keep straight what the heck I'm doing. Now the hex charts, second thing to talk about today, hex charts. These are like the Copic um, hex charts, but they're for three different brands. So we've got Luminance, Prismacolor, and Polychromos. And for the samples that I did for class that I'm, that I'm using, I actually used some solvent to blend the color a little bit just because it's harder to read the numbers when they're not blended a little bit. So that's what I did. You can choose to either do that or what you might want to do is wait until you get to the blending lesson and decide which blending technique you'd like to use for your chart. But you can get it colored ahead of time and be ready. I'm doing a fairly heavy pressure, but you could also do a chart with light pressure. So you know what the light colors look like. You can do it a whole bunch of different ways. You can also do them on different colors. So we are going to do some coloring on black. So I recommend you print one on black. Did not know that would print well on black. So you can actually kind of see the haze from it and know what those colors are going to look like. You're going to know which ones are opaque and which ones are just semi opaque. And that's going to be helping us when we get to that lesson. So if you purchase one of these and you want to take a picture of it and share it on social, do me a favor, share it without showing everybody like the full thing. We don't want people to just be able to print out your photograph. So do them at an angle, put some stuff on top, make them all artsy fartsy, like I know you know how to do just to protect my copyright. Cause I don't like chasing people down to try to have to get that kind of thing fixed, but there you go. I also did a couple of cards with the new purple onion release. And so these are those really cute, lots of fun to color. And Purple Onion makes such great stamps. So Stacy Yakula is the one who designs them and she's incredibly, insanely talented. I really love her work. And I'm using the Purple Onion design stuff because that's gonna help to have some longevity for the class. Because a lot of times 
I use stamps in a class and then they stop making them and then nobody else can take it. So we're going to be using some Stacy in the class and that's about it. So there's links in the doobly doo. There's information over on the blog, lots of stuff. The charts are on the blog, classes over on the art classes site. And that's about it. I'm going to shut up now and let you go. See you later.